When Martha Galhorn wrote to me, Martha was a woman who earned her um, notoriety by covering World War II for Colliers magazine. So it was quite a pleasure to be addressed by such a distinguished woman. I used to say that you know, Pittsburgh was very, um, they pretended to be uninterested in the fact that she wrote, written to me, but actually they were very, very angry. The fact that came out in Iowa, Pittsburgh was extorting every single last thing that I had. Important pieces of evidence were sent to Jim Mars in the prayer that somehow they might survive. They did, I, to, to, to the best of my knowledge, they didn't. Um, they took every single thing that I owned by force of extortion and, and crazed uh, pressure from the Reagan menace team, authorized by Clinton and um, the king criminal Robert Fripp. I used to say that about Pittsburgh, I quoted Martha Gellhorn about Doc, how it never did any good, any man whatsoever to cry out from this place. Clearly a person who's been tortured and molested and terrorized that way since childhood is going to see a different side of NATO when in its incognito branch of the Fern Hollow bridge gang, and I don't see how the Nuremberg administration can deny that that's NATO. Wesley Potts or um, authored the Federal Emergency Management Agency Constitution for Reagan, which he was trying to vote during the AIDS attack to quarantine people. And then he set up his little nuclear test game on Mount Desert Island, as they put it in pit when they were talking openly about um, neurohypnosis. Well, they used me as a lab rat. I used to say Pittsburgh's name is as black as Auschwitz. Because um, Tony Levin's collection agency was based on feedback loops that have no legal privilege whatsoever. They were just gossip lines. Any lie, I mean, I had to answer lie after lie after lie after lie, tiresome lies, because Levin and the Her Majesty's government were murdering in cold blood innocent people. Because Paul McCartney said that anything related to his um, mindset is worth a fortune and saw the beast black market. They filmed the Asian girl who was legally a child being raped for South Beast Black Market, Asian cult cinema. And um, it was just, it's just terrible. There was a raft of Medusa politics. From the Romantic era, raft of the Medusa was about a ship called the Medusa that sank and the survivors had to resort to cannibalism. And um, it was used as a metaphor for the Bourbons. Well, the way that John Lennon pulled his Houdini for Yoko Ono was not just the Tojo Ronan um, revenge story, it was also revenge of the Bourbons. I often think of Marie Antoinette when I hear the name Marie much more as a witness in Dealer Plaza. I loved Marie Antoinette much more um, than the revolutionaries. But whatever you want to... It, Oliver Stone, who was manipulating the situation, admitted that it was a, like the French Revolution. I mean, he he was extolling this idea that they were making off with um, material evidence that they could black market. And Diamond de Gaulle's was leading. Um, they cut the gold caps off my teeth as a metaphor for, for dark hours. It was absolutely shameless. And um, 
they, they just forced me to give them everything I had. All my you know, artwork, all my precious collections of things. This is horrifying. You know, I've been a journalist person. They ripped off my stamp collection. Oliver Stone and Paul McCartney try to make it look like their brain damaged ideas of right and wrong are somehow better than John Schulman ripping off the museum. But their whole story about Leslie Katz and when there's a street called Wenzel, by the way, make no one secret tapes for Andrew Swimmer. You know, the way they rip off the homeless in Pittsburgh. These terrifying, terrible stories of occupation actually derived from John Lennon's slanders about me. I'm mean, John Schulman's slanders about me. And the biggest slander that they came up with was his business about Lennon. Well, Gurdjieff Collection Agency, he was working in the Vichy occupied for the Gestapo. They aim for the soul. You know, the Gestapo were really ruthless people, the way that Biden and Trump are terrible godfathers. Terrible godfathers. They target the things that you love most in your heart. Nobody but a Gurdjieff Vichy Occupy from the Gestapo would have dreamed in a million years of coming up with killing Searcy Kennedy as a surprise attack for these poachers. It's horrifying what they've done. It's absolutely horrifying. And Pittsburgh's name is as black as Auschwitz. It never did any man ever any good whatsoever to cry out from that place or from Seattle, Washington. It's horrifying how cruel they are, how criminal they are, how slanderous they are, how incessant they are about slanderous, evil, and cruel feedback loops. Sure, I want to make a living. I want to be paid for my life's work. I've done my level best to try to warn my peers. What did they do? They robbed me. They lied to me. They isolated me. They poached me. It's, it's criminally unjust. And they justify it with spinner beanie mentalities from Cornell West about biological linkage and compensatory coding. What? They don't know the difference between right and wrong. I don't know the history of the books that were stolen from the Carnegie, but there were lawfully um, belonged to the Carnegie. Nobody should rob a library that way. Yet they probably came up with all kinds of stories justifying it. You know, if, if, if the curators of the museum were to say these were treasures that were taken, and wrongfully from people wanted to return them, that is different. I don't have anything against that kind of return of um, pilfered heritage. Nothing against it. I think it makes perfect sense and reasonable when it's open to the negotiation. I'm not in charge of the Carnegie. I didn't have anything. To, I've reported John Schulman because he told me a cooked up story about a rare book that he charged um, the post office for because it was lost. It didn't look honest. I didn't believe him. I told him, and I was right. He was, and he set me up. They Pittsburgh set on me. They said I was reckless driver at Cali Elementary School. No, it did happen. They blackmailed me for something they tortured me to obtain. The Pittsburgh Courier blackmailed me for something they tortured me to obtain. Is that fair? No, that's Pittsburgh. Typical Pitt. Pittsburgh's name is as black as Auschwitz. Why do I say that? Well, Cambaria has a hidden pond of um, Abara. Abara was from the Jewish Holocaust community. She uh, and I had a beer once in Harlem. She knew Will Zell. Well, Zell was the Goebbels dude from the Green Party who said, what would you think of a scheme to transform the human race by injecting the blood in a Poconos cafe before AIDS started and then set up the AIDS testing operation on Mount Desert Island? A namesake of Daya, in fact, called me when I was living with um, a man who is reputed to have been Obama's uh, director of army operations in Afghanistan. So the whole thing was a Clinton army operation. The whole thing was the cover story. And in their stupidity, King Crimson 
bet them back that my father, my mother, that my grandmother, my grandfather, that me, my writing, my poetry would never mean a damn thing to anybody. That all they had to do was set me up with some girl who misled me as to love me. And nobody would take offense when they castrated me, tortured me again, and gave me Parkinson's disease. They're still gambling this. Roger Waters thinks he can do that. He thinks he can just blow up bystanders and nobody's going to care because he's Roger Waters, the kingpin, the godfather of the rock industry. You know, Brian Eno is a macabre and evil, skin-crawling, cruel weirdo from the, who, you, who managed to come up with the idea of a grinder society where Goebbels represents the NAACP, literally. It's in the record books. Zell was one of these Gurdjieff creeps, one of these Vichy people looking into the soul to figure out how to torture somebody. And, and they said he was the honorary the, uh, African warrior defending the NAACP. Creepy, creepy people. Uh, Obama, Brian Eno, Bill Clinton, Robert Fripp, Paul McCartney are creepy sickos. And from what I gather, Putin was in on that. Oliver Stone was running off to, guess what we set up queer ball. And so they, they have these things that are worth money in South and Beast Black Markets, you know. Snuff films they made and stuff. Uh, yeah, I believe I should be paid lawfully a fair wage for my hard work, but, you know, done next big thing, I'm the next big thing in that, but this mentality stuff is, 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 is berserk. A crime had been committed. They had a picture of me in front of a garage. It was Kodak dated 1966. It had a hundred staples in it and said, I love Sarah Saram. 1966 in a Jewish Holocaust survivor community. He said, I love Sarah Saram. And I sent it to Jim Mars and they've never answered me. He's dead now, but his estate he claimed that every time I wrote to him that he got the letter and even replied to me. And then he claimed, eh, eh, I don't know, I'll have to see if this, this shows up in my effects sometime, boy. You know, they, they were more, they didn't care if anybody was warned or told. They didn't care if anybody was warned or told. That's the thing that they didn't care. You know, they didn't want to save lives. The Zappas were out to poach to make it illegal to save the at risk. What was I, I was at the, I was in the category of the at risk and they said it was illegal for me. If I wash, they will be offended. And they, this applied not just to me, but to every single person who they denied information that could have been used to protect themselves. That's the only thing that they were interested in was making um, pouch out of other people's misfortune. And, and, they, and, and you know, they cut the cap, gold caps off my teeth and said it was because um, I hitchhiked to St. Louis was poaching John Lennon. And this actually played out in their minds. You put yourself in, in their shoes, right? He's hitchhiking from Pittsburgh to St. Louis just to hear Robert Fripp play. He's poaching John Lennon. And Ringo Starr actually maniacally believes this. And anything that anybody who says to him that contradicts him causes him to chew the carpet to shreds. He chews the carpet to shreds. Because somebody contradicts him. And then he sends it out as special ESP through the chain of Swami Nostra who stole cars and beat up queer bait and, and did other things that were all, all, all supposed to be so much fun. And, and he says, queer bait hitchhiked from Pittsburgh to St. Louis just to hear Robert Fripp play music. That's poaching John Lennon. That's poaching John Lennon so we get to cut the gold caps off his teeth. <laughs> 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 
And this comes from a feedback loop from Gurdjieff's culture, who was in uh, helping the Gestapo do this to people in World War II in occupied Paris back in days when, like, when tunes that means Paris was the capital of Germany. 